All right, guys, since we finally acquired the M.2 hat plus for the Raspberry Pi 5, we are now able to play around with it, especially plugging in a SATA adapter instead of NVMe to power a mini NAS. So let's get started. Now in my setup today, we have Raspberry Pi 5 and M.2 hat like I reviewed earlier. And in this case, we're actually gonna be using an M.2 to a SATA port board into our M.2 hat plus for our Raspberry Pi 5. And on that, we're actually gonna be plugging in two terabyte Western Digital red drives that I normally use for testing. To power that, I have an external power source with an external Molex connector. And in that Molex collector, I actually split that into two SATA ports to power the two drives. Now in our operations today, we are actually gonna be running Open Media Vault. So I opt in for Open Media Vault instead of using raw setup from Samba and everything because we have more control and ease of use through our user interface. So let's begin. All right, so here we have my workbench desktop. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually stick in my SD card and you can see that there's two little ejection devices. That's because I have the bootfs and rootfs on here. And I am gonna head over to my Raspberry Pi imager. Now, the first thing you wanna do is choose your device and in here, it's gonna be a Raspberry Pi 5. And to choose the operating system, we are gonna choose other and use 64-bit light. And then choose storage would be a 32 gigabyte SD card. Now I'm gonna hit next. And over here, do I want to customize? To make your life a lot easier and you want to SSH into the device, I would recommend doing this setting. But in my case, I'm just going to hit no and I'm going to let this device um, write over with the Raspberry Pi operating system. So I'm going to hit yes. This generally takes about 10 minutes or so. So just let this run. All right, now that everything's written onto the SD card, all you have to do is just install it onto a Raspberry Pi. So let's do that now. Since I am using Pi KVM, I'm gonna leave this screen running so we could actually see the startup boot process. All right, so here we go. We are booting up for the first time. Let me see if I could fix this right over here. And it is gonna be expanding the file system, installing, generating SSH keys. If you didn't do the process of actually setting it up through the editor from before, this will always happen on the first boot because it asks, it needs to know what language and what keyboard you're using, stuff like that. So setting it up beforehand is much easier than booting it up for the first time like this. All right, so here we go. I am gonna go over to other, head back into US, go into US keyboard, set up a new username, and there we have it. Now we are booted up into the system. Now, what we do need to do is a sudo apt update just so it's gonna grab the new stuff and if I could type, it would be much easier. But yeah, we're gonna do a sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. This will have the new uh, Raspberry Pi config and everything. Allow that to install. It's gonna take about like five minutes for this depending on the speed of your internet. While this is happening, what we're gonna do next is actually open a new tab and we are gonna Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever you wanna use, open Media Vault install script. The first one, Open Media Vault plugin developer install script. And this is what we're actually gonna be using right here. And this will take care of everything you need. So I am gonna leave a link to this down in the description below, but all you need to do is just grab this one, which is the curl script. You could do a wget if you want, but I usually use the curl. I'm gonna copy that, head over to my Raspberry Pi. And when this is done, I could just run that script. All right, now that that is done, I just cleared the screen. I'm gonna go into text, paste this, and paste it into my terminal. And all I have to do is just hit enter. And that is it. It's actually gonna run this and it takes about 20 minutes to for everything to install. So just let this run. I know the font is small, but at least you know where I'm getting all the information from. So I got it from here and then I did the app get. So all in all, it's not too hard to follow. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna let this run. All right, now that everything's all done, you can see you get dropped back into the prompt, but it will automatically reboot. So don't touch anything, just let this go. Now that it's successfully rebooted, I could see that my IP address is actually 210 right over here. And I am actually gonna log in to run a sudo apt install hd param, install that little utility, just to show you the speed that we're getting from a 3.5 inch spindle drive. So I'm gonna do a sudo hd param dash t slash dev slash sda and sdb, I believe. So those are the two drives that I got. And in this case, as long as it's faster than the gigabit ethernet card, then I'm happy with it. I don't have to go to PCIe three lanes or whatever. So we are currently at 153, which is pretty good. It's actually gonna be more than enough for what we're doing. And let's test SDB, which is the second drive. And in this case, it should be near 150. So 147. So yeah, it's about the same. Uh, transferring 
over the gigabit speed so it's more than enough because if it was if it was bottlenecking through be because of the PCIe Gen 2, I would have to change it to Gen 3, but I'm just gonna leave it at the certified Gen 2 speed that Raspberry Pi offers. So again, this is all booted up. Now all I have to do is just go over to 192.168.210, and here we go, Open Media Volfar Raspberry Pi. Now, if this is your first time entering, all you have to do is just hit admin, and the password is Open Media Vault, all lowercase. And we do have to set this up, so nothing's set up right now. The easiest way to do this is go over into storage and go into disk, and we're gonna wipe out these disks. So I'm gonna click on this one, hit wipe, confirm, yes. And we'll do a quick. And there we go, we wiped that one, and I'm gonna wipe the second one as well. Go into wipe, confirm, yes, quick. And there we go. So now we got the two drives wiped out. All I have to do is now go into file system and create a new file system. And in this case, you could choose between ext4, JFS, XFS, BR, uh, BetterFS. So I'm going to choose BetterFS. And I am going to use RAID 0, which is probably not something you will want to use. You will probably want to use RAID 1 so you have a mirror copy. But I'm going to use RAID 0. I'm going to choose the drives, which are these two drives. And I should have about 4 gigs total. 4 terabytes, not 4 gigs, 4 terabytes. So I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna create the file system. Shouldn't take too long here. There you go, end of line, done. Uh, threshold is 85%. The file system will be the SDB, this one right over here, and I am just gonna hit save. And now that is online. So we do have to apply these changes. So I'm gonna hit yes, and apply these changes. And there we go, it's totally mounted. Next thing we need to do is go to shared folders, we're gonna create a new one, and I am gonna call this data store. And file system, I'm gonna choose this one, which is the SDA 3.6 terabytes, and data store, and I am gonna allow everyone to read and write. So I'm gonna hit save. And this is, again, you need to apply this. Anytime you do any of these configurations, you do need to apply it. So the next segmentation would have the configuration. So I'm gonna to go to service now, and go into SMB, and I'm gonna to go to settings, enable this, save. And again, I have to apply changes, yes. All right, and then next one I'm gonna go into share, add a new share, and I'm gonna call this, well, I'm gonna use data store, and that's what it's gonna be called. And public, I'm actually gonna be guest allowed. And then I'm gonna hit save, apply changes, yes. And there we have our first share. Now there are a couple of other things that you need to enable. Uh, mainly, if you wanna keep an eye on your storage, you could turn on smart devices. So go to smart settings, you can enable this for everything. Or you can go to the smart devices on the left, choose each device and edit and monitor enabled for each device monitor enable so now i'm going to apply all the changes and these are the little things i talk about i'd rather use a ui than manually having to set this up i go head into dashboard close this out go into settings and then now start laying out the way i want to look at stuff load average network interfaces uptime and system information i'm gonna hit save and now i have my little dashboard with all the information that i need uh, I could also go into system and then go into plugins and if I have anything extra I could actually just enable here So say like if I wanted to install This stats or something I could just go in here click on it and then hit install and it'll install that little thing Or the downloader or fail to ban or file browser or whatever you want That allows you to install all these plugins and if you want you could go into docker and enable the docker repos and start using those as well But yeah, ultimately now I have my little Samba setup. So now I'm gonna transfer a file over through this new setup. So what I need to do is just head over to files and go to other locations. And what I could do right here is just go to SMB colon slash slash 192.168.105.210, which is our device. And you should have a new folder called data store. And in here, since we have guess it allowed, we just do connect. And now I could actually create a new folder if I wanted to. Hit OK, there you go. I'm gonna delete that. And what I'm gonna do is actually go over to a new window here, go to my downloads and drag and drop this Ubuntu 22. This is about a six gig file. So I'm gonna drop this in here. And here we go, we're transferring the file. 
it's not bad as far as the speed goes. I mean, it's not getting the overall maximum speed that I want, but it is doing 80 megabytes per second. And that is more than enough for a little NAS that we just set up with the Raspberry Pi 5. And here we're using about 6% CPU utilization. Memory is about 390 or almost 400, but I am transferring a file right now and it's not beating up the CPU. So overall, that is not bad. Again, there's so much you could do with Open Media Vault, like install Plex or install Jellyfin or do Docker stuff. So it's not just a NAS system now. You could build it out to do a lot more. It has a lot of potential. But having the M.2 board gives it the stable storage that this Raspberry Pi 5 really needed. All right, and there we have it. The file operation is complete. The file is transferred over. And you can see it drops back down to 0%. So it was only using about 5% when you're transferring that type of file. If you're using anything lower than this, like a Raspberry Pi 0 or even a Raspberry Pi 3, you would see the utilization really high compared to the 5. So all in all, here's the setup of the Raspberry Pi 5 NAS using Open Media Vault. I particularly like this setup because it's not too heavy on the operating system itself. It's extremely easy to use because you get a full dashboard and UI and it is easy to install plugins as well as dockers through a user interface than having to go into the command line. And installing this was super easy. I just ran two commands, uh, app get update and then that bash command that Open Media Vault had. With that being said, if you have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack to alerts.